Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn how to calculate a molecular formula. Specifically, we're going to learn how to calculate the molecular formula of glucose. So let's jump right in and take a look at an example. In this example it says a chemical compound of unknown composition was carefully analyzed and found to consist of 40.02% carbon, 6.67% hydrogen, and 53 0.31% oxygen. The molecular molar mass of the compound is known to be 180.18 grams per mole and we need to determine the compound's molecular formula. So we have a compound here and all we know about this compound is that it's made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen and we know the percent composition by mass of each element in the compound. Furthermore, we know that the molecular formula has a molar mass of 180.18 uh, grams per mole. We need to figure out the compound's molecular formula. So how can we do this? Well, in, in an earlier video, we talked about the differences between an empirical formula and a molecular formula. The molecular formula is the actual formula of a compound that shows the number of each element in that compound, whereas an empirical formula uh, shows or is the formula of a compound expressed in the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in that compound. So we have to figure out the molecular formula or the actual formula of this compound when we're given the percent composition by mass of each element in the compound and we know the molecular formula is molar mass. So the very first thing that we should probably do here is find the empirical formula first. So the very first thing we're going to do is find the empirical formula first and then we can go from there. So in an earlier video, we learned how to do this. Very first thing we're going to do here is we're going to assume that we have a 100 gram sample of this compound here. And if we have a 100 gram sample and 40.02% of its mass is carbon, then that's going to mean that we have 40.02 grams of carbon. If we assume we have a 100 gram sample and 6.67% of its mass is hydrogen, then 6.67 grams of hydrogen is how much we have here. And if we assume that we have a 100 gram sample and 53.31% is oxygen, then you guessed it, we will have 53.31 grams of oxygen. So the very first thing we're going to have to do here is convert the grams of carbon to moles of carbon. By looking on a periodic table of elements, we can see that one mole of carbon is 12.01 grams of carbon. If we take a look on our periodic table of elements, we can see that one mole of hydrogen is 1.01 grams of hydrogen. And if we look on our periodic table of elements, we'll find that one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams of oxygen. So now we just put these values in our calculator. We'll take 40.02 and we're going to divide by 12.01 and we end up with 3.332. And in this step right here, what I like to do is I like to keep three decimal places. So in our first step where we convert grams to moles, go ahead and keep three decimal places. And so if we take a look, this will cancel with this, leaving us with moles of carbon. If we uh, do the second one here, we're going to take 6.67 and divide that by 1.01 and we end up with 6.604. 6.604. This cancels with this, leaving us with moles of hydrogen. And if we take 53.31 and divide that by 16.00, 53.31 divided by 16.00, we're going to end up with 3.332. Moles of oxygen. So the very first thing we did is we converted each one of the grams to moles and we're left with this. In our second step, what we need to do when we're trying to find an empirical formula is we're going to divide each one of these moles here by the smallest amount of moles present out of these three. The smallest amount is 3.332. So we'll divide each one of these by 3.332. We'll divide this by 3.332. And we're going to divide this by 3.332. And what we end up with here is 1. What we end up with here is 
something very close to 2. And what we end up with here is 1. So what are these numbers here? These numbers are going to be the subscripts. right? These values right here are our subscripts. So what is our empirical formula? Our empirical formula, it looks like, is going to end up being, I'll write it right here, The empirical formula is going to end up being C1, H2, we have two hydrogens, so H2, and O1. And we don't need to write subscripts of 1, so this is going to be the same thing as CH2O. So this right here is not our final answer. This is just our empirical formula. We need to determine the compound's molecular formula. So what we need to do next in step two, in step two, we need to find the molar mass of our empirical formula. So in step two, we're going to find the molar mass of the empirical formula. So if we take a look here, we have CH2O as our empirical formula. And let's figure out what the molar mass is. We have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in this compound here. There is one carbon, there are two hydrogens, and there is one oxygen. So we need to take one times the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01. We're gonna take two times the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01. And we're gonna take one times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. And now we're gonna add these up and we get 30.03 grams per mole. So we know that the molar mass of our empirical formula right here is 30.03. Well, if we read this question here, it tells us that the molar mass of the molecular formula is 180.18 grams per mole. So what we can now do is we can now figure out what the molecular formula is going to be. So here's how we're going to do that. In step three, what we're going to do is we're going to find the molecular formula. So. In order to get the molecular formula, what we need to do is we need to take the molar mass of the molecular formula and we're going to divide this by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So if we read, the molar mass of our molecular formula is right here. It's 180.18 grams per mole. And the molar mass of our empirical formula we just figured out is right here. It's 30.03 grams per mole. And when we put this in our calculator, we're going to end up with this right here. We're going to end up with 6. So what do we do with this 6 here? Well, in our final step here, let's find some room here. In our final step, we'll call this step 4. We need to distribute. 
which is going to be glucose. So that's how you figure out the molecular formula of a compound when you're given the percent composition by mass of each element in the compound, or if you're given the mass of each element in the compound. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner that will subscribe to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.